God will change you. He loves you right where you are, but he will not leave you right where you are. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 3, and I preached on this several months ago. Jeremiah said, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay, that's dirt, was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. It seemed good to the potter to make it. Brother Jesse, I was a vessel in the hands of the potter. I was weak, wicked, dope smoking, dope pushing, nobody, nothing. Wicked, ungodly vessel. But Almighty God had me on a potter's wheel. And he began to work with me. And as that clay turned on that wheel, Almighty God, like that potter, would take his finger. And if you've ever watched a potter make a vessel on a potter's wheel, he makes that vessel, and if he don't like what it looks like and it don't suit him, he'll crush that clay. He'll take it and put it back on that wheel, and he'll begin to touch it with his fingers. And he'll just take one finger at a time and just reach out and touch it just a little bit as it spins on that wheel. And God begin to touch my heart and touch my life. There's some of you despise that because you don't want God touching you. You don't want God messing with your little world. You don't want God fingering around in your little heart showing you how wicked and how depraved you are. You'd rather God just leave you alone. But if you ever get any help, you've got to be a willing vessel on a potter's wheel that lets God touch your life. And it may not feel good brother Jesse it may not feel good when you gotta follow your wife to a funeral home it may not feel good some of the things you go through but almighty God's big enough to know how to touch your life he knows how to make you the vessel he wants you to be and I bless his name God didn't just throw the clay away I thank God he is willing to put me on the wheel and touch me and change me for the glory of God and I bless his holy name 10 million times God would have been justified to drop me straight off into a burning hell and God didn't do that cause he loved me wanted to show me his love you must be broken You'll never get saved apart from being broken. You say, I don't like that. You'll go to hell. I didn't like it either, but it's necessary. You say, I don't like the humiliation. I don't like going through the conviction. You'll go to hell. If you don't like the brokenness, there is an easier way. Oh, there's a much easier way. That's what folks are looking for. Satan will make sure you find it too, buddy. Oh, yeah. A much easier way than being broken. Why, after all, you're not such a bad vessel. What you really need to do is be cleaned up. What you really need is a little exterior paint job to make you more presentable. You know, get you some clothes, start getting up on Sunday morning, going to Sunday school. Stop cussing. Stop going to them places on the internet that you know you ought not go to. Do better. Give some money when to pass the offering plate around. You need to straighten up. Rededicate. Do better. Now, there's an easier way, but it won't get you to heaven. Lost folks ain't stupid. They know hey, the, the church gets filled up with a bunch of hypocrites, a bunch of folks that don't know God, don't love God, don't want nothing to do with God. But what they do want to do is they want to put on a good exterior. They want to put a good show on for everybody to look at and know everything's all right. But I tell you what, everything all, ain't all right if it's just clean on the outside. Let me tell you what Jesus said about that clean on the outside in Matthew chapter 23, verse number 25, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup or the platter, but within they're full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse thou that which is within the cup and platter, then the outside may be clean also. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you liken to whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. 
You know what the Word of God said? Jesus said, if you get cleaned up on the inside, it'll take care of the outside. We got a lot of folks worried about cleaning up the outside and a lot of Phariseeism trying to make folks straighten up and do right and be what they want them to be. But I'm going to tell you this morning, if you get your heart right, that outside will catch up. A lot of folks want to clean up the outside. And if that's not good enough, Satan will give you another method. Let's not just stop by cleaning up the outside. I don't want you to be broken like Jesus wants you to be, but Satan says, why don't you just scratch the surface just enough to make the emotions come out? Scratch the surface just enough to come to an altar and cry some tears. I mean, don't really do any damage to the vessel. Just enough to let the tears come out. But I'm going to tell you, the Word of God says that if you're not willing to be broken, you'll not go to God's heaven. This morning, it's not about what's on the outside, and I knew I wouldn't even get to my message. i got points left, but I'm going to stop right here. It ain't about what's on the outside, Keith. And me and you done seen that long ways down the road. There's a whole lot of stuff on the outside don't mean doodly. What this thing boils down to is what's on the inside. You cannot get born of the Spirit of God without having a change. The evidence of salvation is a changed life. You cannot be saved without a change. But you can change and never be saved. Had a man from Sholo, Arizona call me this past week wanting CDs. And he began to share his salvation testimony. Miss Linda, that precious gentleman, told me he had problems in his home and his family and he left Arizona and moved to Texas. And he said, my wife and I were split up and he said, my wife loved me. He said, my wife was lost and she didn't understand the grace of God, but she loved me. It was best a lost woman knew how to love her husband. And he said, my wife called me and he said, finally one day I got honest with my wife. And I said, honey, I've got a problem. I'm an alcoholic and I cannot stop drinking. And he said, his wife said, honey, why don't you come home? I love you and I want you. And we'll work this out together. That gentleman said right then, right there, that moment. And from that moment forward, I have never touched another drop of alcohol. But he was still lost. And still unregenerate without God. He walked away from an addiction. He had a change. Because of an emotional experience on the telephone with his wife. He had a change. But he said, when I got back to Arizona, I got to noticing there was a lady that my wife worked with. My wife got to coming home saying this woman's different. And she's not like everybody else. And when they tell them dirty jokes, she just walks away and won't laugh and won't listen. And she's been inviting us to come to a little old Ricky Dink Baptist church down there. And I believe we ought to go to church. And he said, we went to that little church. And he said, the Holy Ghost of God through the preached word of God got a hold of my heart. And he said, I thought I'd made a change when I stopped drinking. But he said, when God got a hold of me and I surrendered to the Holy Ghost of God, God made a change in my life. I can't explain it. I don't know, I don't know all about it. I just know God did something in me I couldn't do for myself. You cannot be born again without a change. But you can change and never be born again. What lives on the inside 